Our discussion of CVP analysis has assumed that a company sells only one product. Most companies sell multiple products. When a company sells many products, it is important that management understand its sales mix. Sales mix is the relative percentage in which a company sells its multiple products. If a company's unit sales are 80% printers and 20% computers, its sales mix is 80% to 20%. Sales mix is important to managers because different products often have substantially different contribution margins. An example the textbook uses is Ford's SUVs and its F50 pickup trucks have a higher contribution margin compared to its economy cars. Companies can compute break-even sales for a mix of two or more products by determining the weighted average unit contribution margin of all the products. To illustrate, let's assume that Vargo Video sells not only cell phones, but high-definition TVs. Vargo sells its two products in the following amounts, 1,500 cell phones and 500 TVs. The sales mix expressed as a percentage of the total units sold is as follows. 75% of the 2,000 units sold are cell phones and 25% of the 2,000 units sold are TVs. In order to calculate a weighted average contribution margin, we'll need the unit contribution margin for both products, then the unit contribution margin for cell phones is 200 and 500 for the TVs, We'll also need the sales mix, which we just calculated, again, 75% cell phones, 25% TVs, and the last thing we need is Vargo's fixed cost, and again, that is given to us, it's $275,000. Let's determine the weighted average unit contribution margin for the two products. We use the weighted average contribution margin because Vargo sells three times as many cell phones as TVs. As a result, in determining an average unit contribution margin, three times as much weight should be placed on the contribution margin of the cell phones than on the TVs. All right, to calculate the weighted average unit contribution margin, we need to take the contribution margin for the cell phones and multiply that by the sales mix. Okay. We're going to add that to the contribution margin of the TVs multiplied by the sales mix to arrive at $275. That is the weighted average contribution margin for a sales mix of 75% cell phones and 25% TVs. Similar to our calculation in a single product setting, we compute the break-even point in units by dividing the fixed cost by the weighted average unit contribution margin of $275. The break-even point for Vargo is 1,000 units, which includes both cell phones and TVs. Using the sales mix percentages that we computed previously of 75% for cell phones and 25% for TVs, the break-even point of 1,000 units would comprise 750 cell phones and 250 TVs. At this level of sales, the total contribution margin will equal the fixed cost of $275,000. Again, if we sell 750 cell phones with a margin of $200, we will generate $150,000 of contribution margin. If we sell 250 TVs at a $500 margin, that will generate $125,000 of contribution margin. At this level of sales, when we sell 750 cell phones and 250 TVs, our total contribution margin will equal our fixed cost. It's at this level that we will break even. Management should continually review the company's sales mix. At any level of units sold, net income will be greater if higher contribution margin units are sold rather than the lower contribution margin units. For Vargo, the TVs produce the higher contribution margin. If Vargo sells 300 TVs and 700 cell phones, net income would be higher than in the current sales mix, even though the total units sold are the same. Let's review how to calculate break-even sales in units for multiple products. The first step is I need you to determine the sales mix. 
it is based on the number of units sold of a given product relative to the total units sold. Once you know the sales mix, the next step is to calculate the weighted average unit contribution margin. I want you to think of this as the average of all the product's unit contribution margins, but it's going to be weighted by the sales mix. It's calculated by multiplying a product's contribution margin by its sales mix percentages and then adding the results for each product. All right, the third step is we're going to determine break-even point in units. Again, the formula is very similar to the formula that we looked at in the previous chapter, with the exception that we're using that weighted average unit contribution margin, and that's what we're dividing into our fixed cost. And then the last step is we need to determine the individual product sales needed to break even. And that last step, I want you to take the break even point in units, which you calculated in number three, and simply multiply by the sales mix, which was calculated in step one, to determine how much of each product needs to be sold in order for the company to break even. The solutions for this exercise will be provided in the next slide.